Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you how I used the magnetic mask in place of the green screen here for a recent client project. Now, this project is something I showed really quickly in a video where I compared the original Mac mini with the M1 chip with the new Mac mini with the M4 Pro chip. I kind of gave a glimpse of this project and I had a couple people asking more about it. They wanted to see how I did it. Now, the official word from Apple is that the magnetic mask is not a replacement for the green screen here. It's really designed to separate a foreground object from the background so you can apply different color corrections or maybe even put elements like text behind the foreground, but it's not really supposed to be used in place of keying out an entire background. But I think that with some reasonable lighting and a pretty simple background, you can definitely use the magnetic mask in place of the green screen here. I think it actually works a lot better. So this is what the finished client video looked like. And for the purposes of this tutorial, I replaced their logo and branding with my own logo and branding. But the creative on this was totally theirs. Their marketing team is really fun and has some great ideas. And the end use for this particular project is floating digital billboards. If you live in Miami or Tampa or New York, you may have seen these. And we did a series of these videos for this client for the holidays and in through January. So let me show you how we did this project start to finish. Here's what the studio setup looked like. And I apologize because if I had realized I'd be making a video about this whole thing, I would have done a better job of documenting it. But this kind of gives you an idea of what we were working with. It's just a cheap folding table and a plain white wall in the background and a lot of lights. And here's what the raw media looked like with that setup. And you can see that this shot is not perfect by any stretch. We even have some conduit in the back side of the frame where a lot of the electrical work is tucked away. There's a lot of variation between the surface and the background. And you can also see reflections and stuff in the bottle. We're gonna be masking a lot of that out, so I'm not too worried about it. Because the dimensions of these billboards are so long and skinny, we shot the raw media at 4096 by 2160. All right, let's start a new project. And under the video format, I'm going to set the aspect ratio to custom, and I'm going to put in the dimensions requested by the billboard company, which was 2176 by 608. And the frame rate they requested was 29.97. So I already found the best take from this raw media. And for me, that meant that the motion was smooth and that the label started and ended straight to camera. So this is the take, and I'm just going to drop it on my primary storyline. Now these ads needed to be exactly 15 seconds long. So I'm going to queue up my playhead to the point where the bottle is at rest and the hand has just come out of the frame. And I'm going to add hold frames here and extend it all the way to the 15 second mark. You need to do any retiming before you apply the magnetic mask, because once you change the speed of your clips, the magnetic mask will be disrupted. All right, now let's apply a little bit of color correction to this. I've got the basic camera LUT applied to this clip, but I think we could add a little bit more vibrancy. So I'm going to cue up my playhead to where the most action is happening in the clip. Let me open those scopes and close my browser here. And I'm just going to add a little contrast. I'm not going to do anything fancy and Rob's head is not going to be in the shot in the end, so I'm not really worried about that. I'm really focused on the product. I do think I want this label to be a little bit brighter, so I'm going to add another color board and apply a color mask and just brighten up that label. Okay, yeah, that feels good. All right, now again, I'm going to cue up my playhead to where the most action is happening in the frame, and now it's time to apply the magnetic mask, so let me select my clip, add a magnetic mask, and I wanna select the bottle, and the arm, but I'm not worried about Rob's head. We're gonna crop that out anyway. And I'm just gonna zoom way into the frame here and really be picky about this product. And I'm going to use the brush tools to really refine the edge here. And I also wanna clear out the space between his fingers. So I'm gonna use the brush tool to do that as well. And then I'm just gonna hit the analyze button. All right, let me hit the done button and let's take a look at our cutout. I'm gonna play it back in real time because I really wanna get a good look at what's happening. So right in here, I'm seeing some weirdness. I think it's like picking up the shadow of the hand. So let me enable the magnetic mask again, and I'm just gonna use the brush tool to erase that. And then I'm going to arrow over frame by frame and just brush out anything else that looks a little weird, like right there. This action is happening so fast that I think it just makes it hard for the magnetic mask. All right, so let me hit done. Let's look at it one more time. All right, one more thing. I'm seeing a little space between the fingers. That's just gonna make me crazy. So let me go in and clean that up. 
and just going to track frame by frame here. If you want to know more about how I'm getting super precise on my brush tools, make sure you check out my full magnetic mask tutorial. It's full of tips for maximizing this feature in Final Cut Pro. So I think like if you really look closely, there's some things we could still clean up. But before we get into that, I want to add the rest of my components for this video to see what I really need to clean up with that magnetic mask and what will not be visible once we add the rest of the elements. So let me go back to the titles and generators sidebar. I'm going to grab a custom solid and I'm going to drop it underneath my video clip and let's change the color of this custom solid. And already I feel like this looks a lot cleaner than it did over the black background. Okay, so this is what we're looking like so far. Obviously we're gonna have to do some scaling and repositioning here, but before we do that, let's add in the rest of our elements. So this is the placement where the client wanted their logo. Again, I'm not using their logo, I'm using my own, but this gives you an idea of what it looked like. And they also had a QR code that they wanted to drop in the corner. So I'm gonna scale it down and I'm going to enable my title and action safe zones because to be honest, I'm not really sure how much those billboard screens get cropped around the perimeter and I wanna make sure that everything is title and action safe. Okay, and the last element we need to add is our text. So I'm going to hit Control T to add a basic title. I'm gonna make it 15 seconds long and I'm going to drop it underneath our video clip and above our color solid background. And let me just format this text really quick. Now I want this text and the bottle to be as big as I can possibly get away with. And I also need to make sure that the bottle starts in a certain position and ends all the way over here at the end of our action safe line. Additionally, and this is why this project is so complicated, I wanna see as little of this shoulder as possible. So the first thing I'm going to do is start by scaling up the video clip so that the bottle is as big as I can get it and still have it be action safe. So action safe is the outer lines. I wanna stay in there. So that to me is as big as I can get this bottle to be. And the bottle also needs to start just to the right of the logo. So I'm gonna cue up my playhead to the beginning of the clip and modify the X position to get it where I want it to be. And I think even a little over because I'm seeing so much of this shoulder and I wanna crop that out. All right, now it's landing in exactly the right spot where I want it to be, that's perfect. But I think I can make the text a little bit bigger. So I'm going to, instead of working in the text inspector, I'm going to head on over to the video inspector and play with the scale and position here. Okay, this feels really good. I'm gonna play with the position of the logo a little bit. And I think I can even make that QR code a little bigger. All right, I think generally speaking, we're in business in terms of our layout. So now let's work on that text reveal. I'm going to turn off my transform tools in the viewer. And let's close up our browser and make this nice and big. And let's add a draw mask to that text. So I'm just gonna drag and drop that draw mask. And what I'm going to do is cue up my playhead to where the bottle is not moving. And I'm going to draw a mask, the shape of this bottle. Now, because I've got the text box in my viewer, I can't just click and draw the way I want. So I'm just gonna make a bunch of control points and then I'm gonna reposition them in the inspector. And I'm going to square off the left edge like so. Okay, now let me address this curvature around the bottle that I can't click on because of my text box. So I'm gonna head on over to the video inspector and I'm gonna twirl down on the control points and manually change these control points in the inspector. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Now what I'm going to do is cute my playhead in my timeline to right before the bottle actually starts moving. And I'm going to, in the inspector, twirl up on my control points. I'm not gonna modify those. I'm going to twirl down on the transform tools on the draw mask, and I'm going to make a keyframe on position. Then I'm going to hit command two to start working in my timeline. And I'm going to arrow over once and reposition that draw mask. I'm just gonna keyframe this. And I'm just gonna arrow frame by frame and reposition that draw mask. So the text is revealed behind the bottle. And I know this keyframing can be tedious, but to be honest, you guys, sometimes this is just the most accurate way to achieve the effect you're looking for. And as I'm doing this, I can see that the left side of my text is getting cropped off. Not to worry. We can just reposition those control points. They don't have any keyframes on them, so we're not messing anything up. That's why you want a keyframe on the position, not the control points. All right, we're not done yet. I also want to make the top of my bottle transparent so you can see the text underneath. So again, I'm gonna cue up my playhead to right where the bottle starts moving, and I'm going to apply a draw mask this time to the video clip, and I'm going to 
draw out the shape of the inside of the bottle. And I'm going to make the same number of control points on the left side of the bottle as I did the right side. Now I wanna twirl down on my control points in the inspector. And let me zoom in like so on the frame so you can see what I'm doing in the inspector and this part of the viewer at the same time. And basically what I wanna do is go through my control points and try to make them as symmetrical as possible. So we get a uniform shape to our mask. All right, when I'm satisfied, I'm gonna close up those control points and I'm going to invert my mask. And then I'm going to dial down the fill opacity. So the bottle's still, you know, there, we're still seeing the fluid inside. I just wanna get a peek at those letters. And then what I would do is play with the feather and the fall off and find a spot that you're satisfied with. I'm gonna cue my playhead to right where that bottle starts moving. And again, on the draw mask, on the transformations, not the control points, the transformations, I'm going to add a keyframe and I'm gonna do the same thing you saw me do a minute ago with the draw mask on the text, which is just to add a keyframe, arrow over frame by frame and reposition that mask. While I'm doing this keyframing, if you guys like this video, if you wanna see more tutorials like this, let me know down in the comments. I love hearing from you. Also make sure to do me a favor and smash that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe. Next up, we wanna add a drop shadow to our video clip to give it a little bit of a sense of place. So I'm just gonna drag and drop that on my video clip and I'm going to squish it way down and angle it back into the left. And the last thing I'd like to do is just trim up the front of my text here because I don't wanna see these letters in the frame until the bottle starts moving. That's kind of the magic of it, right? So let me cute my playhead to about this point here and I'm just going to add a really quick cross dissolve at the beginning of that text, and there we go. So that is how I use the magnetic mask in place of the green screen here in Final Cut Pro. I hope you guys liked this tutorial. I picked out another video I think you're gonna like right up here, and I'm gonna let YouTube pick out something it thinks you'll like down here. Thanks for hanging out.